know this is a good opportunity to share with you what we have in that new frontier. As you can see in that presentation, it talks about uh, the unknown investment frontier, which is actually emerging to everyone now. Uh, so just in case you don't know where Turkana is. <laughs> uh, and actually, so basically we sit at the northwestern edge of Kenya, uh, bordering uh, three international boundaries, uh, Ethiopia, Southern Sudan, Uganda. Uh, just next door is, is the largest, if you don't know, the largest desert lake in the world, Lake Turkana, and the largest lake in Kenya. It doesn't compare with our portion of Lake Victoria. This is the largest. <laughs> And then, of course, a county with uh, a minimal population of uh, it's about uh, 1 million. Uh, the last census was 855,000, so it's about 1 million. But we more or less uh, occupy 13.5% of the Kenyan landmass. So you can imagine that. It's quite huge. I wish some of you are politicians, you will have faced the problems of transversing that place on road, on very bad roads. Some of the things that Trukana is known for is basically it's the high poverty level. So I think it's the poorest in the country, with 92% poverty level. The highest uh, food insecure population, 72% in the country. Uh, 2.2 percent, interesting, 2.2 percent literacy level. And this is all from the statistics by the Kenya Bureau of Statistics. Uh, with a transition rate from one level to the other of 38 uh, percent. And of course, a net enrollment of 40 percent. So basically, it tells you it's a very bad situation in terms of literacy and education we are really beginning from nothing. Uh, when you go to health, 94% uh, home deliveries. I think most of our people don't know whether the hospitals exist because they are not even there. So, but I look at it as a, an opportunity. It's not existing. One million people need it. So it's a, it's a business opportunity that is lying, uh, uh, that has not been fully exploited. Uh, the under five mortality rate of 72 uh, uh, by 1,000, and of course, the worst uh, HIV uh, indicators. You know, you may be blinded by the, the, the Kenyan global average, but if you look at the county specific, there are certain counties that things are not as rosy as you will expect. Uh, there are only about 34% of population that has access to uh, safe drinking water. Uh, with the nearest water point being a radius of 12 kilometers. Uh, and of course, you can see 18% proportion of population with access to sanitation. We are not really doing very well. So as I say, this could be the, 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 the newest frontier for this country. The frontier that many of us never knew it existed and never knew where it was. Let me just take you through the, the, the resource uh, matrix for, the, for Turkana County, what we have in that county as a whole. Uh, I begin with oil and gas discoveries. Explorations are going on now with Tuloil and uh, African oil. 
in some parts of Turkana. There are also other companies, Canadian company, an American company that are also beginning uh, exploration, uh, uh, that began exploration two months ago. But so far, indications are that we may have reached the threshold of commerciality. Although this has not been officially announced, but we have reached that threshold. We are looking at a resource base of about probably anything between 10 and 20 billion uh, uh, barrels uh, potential and a likelihood of much more yet to be discovered. Uh, two days ago you saw in the fourth exploration site we had a very good uh, uh, positive discovery of a net column of 60 to 100 meters. That is huge quantities of oil. And uh, so there's a lot of positive things on that sector. And then the other main other key discovery that has been done has been the water, the underground water aquifers. Sometimes I have heard so many people saying water and oil doesn't mix. Yes, in Turkana it mixes. <laughs> Why am I saying so? That's because some, in, in a, in a landmass of 77,000 square kilometers, so you'll find oil here, you'll find water here, you'll find minerals here. So you'll find all these things within that small uh, particular area. And I can say, for, for some of you who know Texas State in the US, you have water, you have oil, you have minerals, all in the same place. And basically this is this is, this is, this is, <laughs> what you got in the wild west of the United States is what you have in the wild north of Kenya. <laughs> A survey is continuing, being done by the government and uh, in conjunction with UNESCO, with funding from both the government and uh, the Japanese that has already indicated the presence of six large uh, deep water aquifers. And these deep water aquifers are not so deep. I think the, the longest depth is about 400 to 500 meters. With a larger one around north of Kakuma refugee camp, uh, uh, resource base of about 200 uh, billion uh, cubic meters. So in total of the six, we've got 250 billion cubic meters. And that's not yet because the southern part of Trukana County, areas bordering the famous Suguta Valley, you've heard of the Suguta Valley where we had these problems last year, bordering Baringo, Samburu, and, uh, and West Pokot, have not yet been surveyed. But these are the areas that are yielding uh, the oil discoveries. But we still believe that they could be holding uh, huge uh, resources of water. And that's where I come from. And that's where many of the rivers flowing uh, out of our, 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 our water towers are going through. So we believe there might be much more resources that are within that particular area. Uh, the other one and very soon recently i think two years ago i was addressing uh, uh, the tourism stakeholder hotel owner stakeholder meeting in mombasa when i was still an assistant minister of forest and wildlife and i told them don't concentrate on the beaches of the indian ocean come to Turkana. the opportunities are there everyone did not believe me but i think last year a couple of them began to see the reality that literal what I was in telling them was actually the true picture what is, what is coming up. So, so the next item that we might uh, be hearing very soon is the mineral discoveries. We think that we could be sitting on the largest deposits of gold in the country. But this is to be confirmed. <laughs> Uh, and, and other very precious uh, minerals and some other minerals I will not talk about here.
we sit on a very huge energy potential. I think many of us here of solar, the geothermal power in Olkaria and uh, Menengai. I think of the total 7,500 uh, mega, megawatt potential of geothermal, almost a half sits in Turkana County, in the Sukuta Valley. That valley of death could be a valley of opportunities. Uh, and of course, the forests, Lake Turkana itself, uh, with its very good beaches, probably even beaches that can challenge uh, the beaches that we have in, uh, in, uh, in, in Malindi and, and Mombasa. Yeah, I think for some of you who may have had an opportunity to go there, this is a place to go for holiday. Uh, of course, uh, the rivers and, and the rich Turkana culture. I think the country knows about the Maasai. I think the Maasai culture has been... Huh? <laughs> so much out there, Maasai, Maasai. But we have other cultures that are intact, yeah, original. I say original because its originality is where archaeologists have established that all of us seated here once lived in and originated from. You see, there's proof. There is proof. There is proof that the first, the oldest fossils have been found in Turkana. Fossils that are dated even to 250 million years ago, which gives proof that Turkana actually was where mankind originated. That is the home of mankind. And I think that can be elaborated with uh, the Turkana boy, which is the oldest uh, fossil that was discovered by uh, Dr. Richard Leakey and team of archaeologists. Together with that, it has also indicated, I think we are here to discuss about business, but archaeologists have told us, maybe they are going to announce it very soon, that the oldest economy ever known to man was pastoralism. The pastoral economy, and this is where it began to be practiced. Before we adapted all these new invented economies, pastoralism was number one economy that man came up with. That's why if you tell the Turkana to do away with that pastoralism, and yet that is the home of the pastoral economy, I think it may be difficult. The only thing we can do is modernize it and give it a business approach so that it continues to thrive and live on. Uh, of course, the game reserves and national parks. I think it's huge. Uh, we, we all know about the Masai Mara uh, beast, uh, wild beast uh, migration. I, I think the country has not known the largest wildlife migration, much that can rival what we have in Masai Mara, is actually within Turkana and South Sudan. It's a cross-border thing. Stretching from those who know Southern Sudan inside a, a place called Zeraf, Boma, all the way to close to Kakuma, Lotikipi. It's a huge migratory corridor for all kind of wildlife that is ever known. I think that's going to be the biggest discovery very soon. So basically you can see that in terms of resources, very virgin resources, they are all here. So what are the opportunities in the oil sector? And this is a drawing that we've taken, uh, a photo from uh, Ngamia One. The famous Ngamia one that uh, the epitome of Turkana. Uh, basically, at the very early stages of exploration, 
what normally uh, uh, technically they call upstream upstream opportunities business opportunities this is what you got those who are doing seismic seismic survey that is already a business for those who have a technicality in that particular area including airborne surveys those who might be doing environmental and social impact surveys that is an opportunity because every stage of, of, of exploration and production an environmental impact assessment is a requirement those that are an interest in logistics and infrastructure uh, services is a lot in fact this as a component of the companies that are doing oil exploration now probably constitutes almost uh, 60 65 percent of the total uh, business that is on offer is logistics and infrastructure services this is basically clearing and forwarding uh, of goods being bought internationally being bought locally uh, road constructions preparation of uh, uh, the drill sites it involves heavy machinery it involves uh, purchase of machinery uh, accommodation facilities i think right now with talo we probably may have the region of about 800 staff they're accommodating so all these people need food they need accommodation uh, aircraft and light vehicles uh, I think I saw somebody here who sells vehicles. The largest consumers of uh, pickup uh, double cabin vehicles now are the oil and gas companies. They hire them from individuals, they buy them from themselves to use for security and for other logistical operations. Uh, and of course, fuel. Fuel is a large component because the, those rigs are being run with uh, fuel generators, very huge generators that probably even consume almost close to 500, uh, uh, is it, no, 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 50, yeah, almost 200,000 liters uh, a day when it is uh, fully running. It's quite a lot of fuel that is going into here, including vehicles, the maintenance, and, and, and everything else. Uh, security services is also another bigger component because one of the things that oil and gas companies are emphasizing is safety and security. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, safety, uh, equip, uh, where, uh, in terms of uh, 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 the security surveillance around uh, those oil fields within the camp, because anything could happen. So I think it's a very, very, very critical component of, 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 of the oil and gas sector. As you begin at exploratory stage and moving downwards to development stage, because the moment you, you, you we, we, the government officially announces a commerciality, then we have to upgrade the security status because it becomes a, uh, a national, a critical, a national asset that must be uh, safeguarded. Of course, the drilling equipment, the pipes, uh, the water and sanitation provision, uh, local content issues. When I say local content issues, is about employment, is about uh, the percentage of your business you're giving out to local communities so that they also feel that uh, uh, they are part and part of your, uh, your business. And of course, uh, uh, the job opportunities that are on offer, skilled, semi-skilled, and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and unskilled. Critically, you realize that over 80% of the skilled jobs there in the oil and gas industry right now, it is foreigners that have taken over. Basically because we don't have that uh, uh, skill, skill set capacity in country 
to be able to accommodate that. Most of the engineers are, are from out of the country, country. Most of the managers are from out of the country. So I think that's a critical area in terms of business and where also universities can be able to help grow the scale. You will be surprised even within the Ministry of Energy, they do not yet have full capacity to understand this new industry that is coming up. Uh, let me touch a few things again that are related to the oil and gas industry but to the general uh, resources that are in Turkana. I think I, I will do a disservice to the residents there if I don't touch on these particular ones because they are interrelated. You know, what, one thing that we don't want to do is to develop the oil industry the way Nigerians did. Because Nigeria developed the oil industry and they abandoned the rubber they were growing, they abandoned the food crops they were growing, they abandoned everything else they were doing and they just focused on the money oil, the petrodollar. It is only one or two years now when they are realizing that they need to go back again to those other sectors. So even in Turkana, we do not think that we have gotten everything. I think our focus is to use those revenues, not even in Turkana but in the country, to be able to grow the other sectors we think are so critical to our people. And I think that's what I saw in Texas. I think it's a very good experience because Texas is a, is a global center of everything, virtually everything. Without oil and gas, they can still survive. When they had the recession two years ago in the US, it's only Texas state that was unaffected. So what does that tell us? It tells us a lot. Some of the flagships that we are thinking, we have developed, and all these are business opportunities. It's if Trukana has that huge energy potential, that oil potential, that white uh, water potential, why can't we make it as a center of energy and technology in Kenya? Can we start growing the skills within here in, co in, 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 in cooperation with uh, the, the private sector? Yes, I think we can. The other critical thing, and you saw in my first uh, two slides, it's about uh, the level of uh, uh, health access. And of course, I am not talking about one million people. I think the next influx of Kenyans and non Kenyans who will be coming to Turkana will be so huge. I think as a preparatory measure, we have to make sure that we have upgraded our hospitals. All the way from the dispensaries to the health center to the 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 the, the, the medical personnel, so that we can be able to match the challenge that we are en en uh, envisioning coming up. And you, as the business sector, has the opportunity to help us grow this because we don't have it. The other critical thing is about water development and utilization both of the deep water aquifers and the shallow waters. In fact, the consumption of Kenya to date of water is 3.4 billion cubic meters. So if Turkana is holding 250 billion, <laughs> then you can as well close all your taps and we provide you with water. <laughs> So we have a huge potential to grow food. We have a huge potential to turn this place into another breadbasket. There is about 45% of arable land in Trukana of the 77,000 square kilometers. You can irrigate half if you want to go maximum. You can irrigate 45% uh, of, 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 of that land. So you can imagine how much food you can be able to produce and to export. So there's a huge area there. So as a county, we have said, we don't want to be over ambitious. 
But if the private sector comes in and says they want to do much more, then they are welcome. We think that we can manage 15,000 hectares every single year for the next four years and we can produce food to feed one million people and at least have a surplus, a 20% surplus to keep and, and export elsewhere. But if others feel that they can be able to, to do much more than that, and of course uh, adopting latest technologies and innovations to improve agricultural production. I think this early, we have to start beginning on how do we make sure that those water aquifers continue replenishing and they are not depleted. Because those are the challenges which India is now facing. Those are the challenges which, which Texas is, is experiencing. Uh, uh, because they have depleted their, their aquifers so much to grow crops. Uh, yellow maize? Huh? Hey, corn. Wanakusa mingi sana. Hii mahindi tunakula hapa, tunapata from US government donations. Hiyo maji hiyo ndiyo ima. Because they are not getting the right balance of uh, uh, water extraction and, and making sure those aquifers are maintained. Uh, and I think this is something that we can be able to adopt earlier. So that to me is already a business opportunity because the business in that water, to get the water up is like drilling oil. Getting it up putting it up in tanks, the distribution systems, if you have a pipeline to go out of Tru within Trukana or even outside Trukana, it's already a huge business opportunity. And we are being told that in 15, 20 years, the cost of water will be much higher than the cost of oil. Recently we did a Trukana County Miss Tourism. Do you know we only did Local, local advertisements within Lodua, not even outside Lodua town. There were like a thousand people who came. <laughs> and each of them could pay 2,000 shillings to get into the place where we were holding the, the event. So you can imagine if we were to advertise this and do a, a cultural week that involves so many things that has excursions to the lake, excursions to the oil field, excursions to the, to the archaeological education sites. How much we can be able to make out of this? It's huge. If Egypt can do it with the mere pyramids. <laughs> now, if Egypt can do three, four, five times, six times, I think, with mere pyramids. If other countries can do with old buildings, what can we do with the credo of mankind? Uh, on the livestock sector, and I said th this is an industry we are not going to be forgetting. I, th I think there are critical things that we have to modernize livestock to give it a business uh, approach so that uh, we continue uh, uh, getting uh, uh, the dividends from this critical sector and and, 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 and finally down there is, is growing fodder. If it is the cows, I said one time in, uh, on, a, on a television, if it is the cows that are so fast that the cattle rustlers uh, love to pick, then I think we have an opportunity to change the breed. Change the breed and have cows that can only move uh, <laughs> at 100 meters an hour <laughs> because of the heavy heavy weight and we are having yeah, I think these are things that we need to adapt and of course the fish factory I think the sweetest fish I don't know where this fish is coming from that we just had for our dinner but you eat the fish of Turkana like Turkana you will never feel again eating fish anywhere else it's so sweet so nice, so fresh. I tell you, we take dry fish on trucks to Kisumu. It doesn't last 20 minutes. And I think uh, Kasuku can uh, attest to this. <laughs> so what potential can we do here? 
There used to be a fish factory that the, the Norwegians had built. But halfway through, they were th we, we threw them out. I think this is a good opportunity to revive that fishing, in that, that, that fishing factory and make business out of this. Because they are about 30% of, of the 1 million inhabitants of that lake. All along, around the lake, in Marsabit, in Trukana, in, uh, in, uh, in Samburu, who are depending on the fish from this particular lake. Of course, there are certain critical things that we must still do in appreciation of the problems we are facing. I think our border areas are all insecure, so we still want to, to enhance uh, dispute resolution mechanisms. We still want to, uh, uh, to put in contingencies for drought and, uh, and, uh, and, and disaster contingency. We may be thinking Trukana has all these resources. Uh, the other day we had a locust invasion. So when you're talking about uh, uh, there could be a maize shortage here, we are even thinking that this year we probably we might be hit by another drought. So those are the challenges we are facing, the, the, uh, the short-term challenges we are facing even before we develop those particular resources. And of course, I think one thing that the Constitution has uh, obligated us and I think uh, Bilo has uh, emphasized is the fact that the voice of the citizenry, we must get a framework and work within that framework in whatever decisions we undertake at, uh, uh, in, in, in the county. And, and of course, infrastructure development, I can't rule that one out. We've got a small airstrip in Lodwa. We have about six rotations of fly 540 every day. If you don't book two weeks earlier, you cannot get a seat. And then if you imagine going through the road, uh, the, the dilapidated road which Kasuku will talk about, it takes you a week to get to Lodwa. By the time you get to Lodwa, they have to medivac you because you're not used to <laughs> that road condition. But I think critical and this is going to be around the, 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 the key road networks and the Lapset corridor, the transport corridor, which uh, Kasuku will be talking about, will be the urban growth centers, modernizing the urban growth centers that are going to grow up, making sure that the planning is put well, the hotels are put, anything that uh, a modern town requires, there is that big opportunity now that is going to be growing up. And we want to begin even before the lay, uh, uh, the transport network itself on the ground, that we have a plan for those urban areas that also provides the opportunity for the business people to be able to come and invest in an organized way. Of course, improving our systems, I think below emphasize this one so much, financial systems, monitoring systems, I, I think to us is very critical as we move forward. We could be in a transition now where a lot of challenges and expectations are expected on us, but we think that with much more investment here, we can be able to improve this particular area to be responsive to the needs of uh, uh, the local monanchi. And uh, yes, in the energy sector, there's a lot you can do. As a flagship, we think Prosophis, the Mathenge, is a problem in Turkana as much as a problem in, uh, in Baringo but I want to convert it as an opportunity because this is, this is a tree that we can use to generate power. This is a tree we can use to generate uh, uh, fodder for livestock. This is a tree we can be able to use for furniture. And I think the best is to do a trial, pilot basis, generate power using brosopis because the, the technology is the same old technology where you had timber uh, running steam water producing steam and, and steam producing power. So we can easily do it with a seed that is so evasive because that is the biggest uh, threat now to the Tukipi area where uh, we have the largest water aquifer. And of course uh, uh, the investments in all the other energy uh, potential areas. How do we plan, have we budgeted and how do we plan to, re to finance this? And I want you to help me when we'll be discussing, because this is a thing that we have not yet concluded. 
And I think many ideas help enrich. Because you can have a plan which you cannot be able to finance. It's nothing but a plan. And we've been told in, by international experts that it's always 30% of, 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 of any plan that is always achieved. I don't know whether that is true or it is wrong. If you look at that big pie chart, it more or less looks at uh, what we've categorized in terms of the sectors, the ministerial sectors for the county, and the percentages we are allocating in terms of what each sector is going to provide in. So for 2030, 2013, 2014, that's the Turkana County government uh, 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 allocation of resources. Because of the many problems we have, I think we can do with literal uh, uh, fewer people, but deliver 60%. The options we have for, for resourcing. So far this financial year, this is how the picture looks like. We are still heavily dependent on national treasury disbursements. If they are late, it affects us. If you look at the small pie for, for, for the private sector, it's, it's non-existent there. If you look at the pie for local revenue, it is still very small, 4%. I think this, this poses a very big challenge for us as we move forward. Uh, our own thinking is to go that direction. It may be over-ambitious, but I think your ideas are what are going to help counties get there. We are thinking to reduce the national transfers to about 60% of the total budget of what we'll be requiring and increasing much more on public-private partnership, business partnerships. The 23% represents business. It may look uh, very ambitious, but I think uh, uh, with the great Africans seated here, they can tell us whether this is something that we can be able to manage and what sort of incentives we can be able to provide to achieve that percentage or even more. Asanteni Ejoknoi.